We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Good morning, church. Hey, my name is Mike Miller. I'm one of the pastors here at the best church in, in this whole state. And so uh, we're going to have a great day today. Uh, today is Sunday, obviously, St. Patrick's Day or something like that. I see a lot of people wearing green. I have green on my socks, so don't you dare try to pinch me. Uh, I don't care if you can't see it. Uh, but today is actually two days after my birthday, so I want to make sure you all know I accept gifts all year long, and uh, meat is a great gift. Uh, but last week, Pastor Matt mentioned that today we are starting a, a series called Stop Going to Church. It's a short one. Stop Going to Church. I'm sure uh, some of y'all are, are, are probably, when you heard him say that, you probably sat there and thought, huh? Like, it's it, it, you got Easter in a couple of weeks and a pastor is telling us to stop going to church. I don't think so. So I, I want to say, I hope none of y'all actually took that in a way that literally, like, I'm not going to go to church. I hope none of you took that and that's what you are considering doing. But the things that we're going to be talking about today, uh, I, I believe they're so important to uh, your life. And I, and I think that they will change your life if you apply them to your life. Uh, so how many of you have places that you go that you frequent regularly, like you, you go to, reg- maybe you frequent a particular grocery store or a, a, another type of store like Bass Pro, I, I go there a lot, uh, or you frequent like a, a baseball games or something. Everyone has a place that they go to a lot, right? How many of you have something? Okay. So for like me, I, there was a point in time in my life where, uh, I mean, just a couple months ago, I would say that I frequent the gym. And I would say that I would go probably six times, sometimes even seven times a week. Uh, But now I went from being a family of three to a family of five, and two of them being babies in diapers. And so that's not happening anymore. But Pastor Mac, with the CK, Mac, he would tell you that he frequents Mission Barbecue. He goes there once, sometimes two, three times a day even. Um, (laughs) He does. And some of y'all probably like, I go to God's Holy Chicken place quite often. How many of y'all know where that is? Last, last service, someone dared say Popeyes. I was like, you should go. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Matt would tell you that he frequents Mi Pueblo. He goes there quite often. Um, I like to go to Korean restaurants. And by the way, how many of you have never met me or don't know my story? So there's a few people. If you're, probably, you're probably sitting there thinking, I figured you would go to Mi Pueblo. I'm half Korean. And so I'm not Hispanic, but I go to Korean restaurants all the time. How many of you can say, I go to church and I go regularly? I think there's a lot of people in this room. That's good. That's good. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the staff here, if you would talk to them and ask them the right questions, they'll tell you we run into people a lot that are from ACC or they say, you know, they stop us and they're like, hey, I know you. And you start talking to them and they say they go to ACC, but then what you really find out is, they go to Christmas and they go to Easter. <laughs> you know, we have a term for those people. We call them priesters. And sometimes we call them CEOs. It's Christmas and Easter only. Um, but they don't give. They don't serve. They don't go to growth courses. They, I mean, they don't attend a life group. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but going to church, I will tell you, it, it's more than just attending a couple of times a year. It's more than being a priester. It's more than attending every Sunday even. It's more than being at church on time. There's a hint for you too. Uh, but it's, it's more than just being in these walls. So before we dive into the word, let's go ahead and pray and then we'll jump in. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would meet us here, that you would speak to our hearts today and our lives, that you would, that you would change our lives and transform us. And, and God, I pray, Lord, that uh, 
no one in this room will take it seriously to stop coming to church, Father, but everyone will take it seriously to start being the church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, can you go ahead and do me a favor and turn to Psalm 92? It will be on the screen behind me as well, but uh, if you don't own a Bible, there is a copy of it in the seat back in front of you. You are welcome to write your name in that. Uh, We want you to have a copy of the Word of God, and we should take that home. Uh, But we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this concept of stop going to church. Did you know that, that there is a term in the Bible for the word church? I think a lot of you could probably, could probably tell me what that is, but church comes from a Greek word that, uh, that is ecclesia. It's called ecclesia, and it means called out ones. Listen, I want you to hear me. I know we, we titled this series, Stop Going to Church, and it might sound a bit counterintuitive, you know, because church isn't a place that you go. It is a movement that you are a part of. Ecclesia also has a second meaning, by the way. It means a gathering or an assembly. It's both a gathering of believers uh, together to, they get together to worship, to honor God, to corporately hear the word of God, to use our our gifts. It's both that and it's the sending of believers into the world for our commission. So it's going out into the world and sharing the love of Jesus. And when you do this, you're part of a movement, not just part of a church. So how can we be part of this movement? I want to introduce you to a term or a word called, uh, I mean, I would say like you'd say it when you're talking to someone, you say, I want my life to flourish, right? Or I want want to flourish. So the, the word flourish means to be in a period of highest productivity, excellence, or influence. So let's jump into the word real quick. Psalm 92, 12 says, But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. The godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. So there's days, based on this definition of the word flourish, to be in a period of highest productivity, excellence, or influence. There's days where I feel like, personally, like I'm being productive. There's days where I'm like not productive at all or excellent, you know, and things like that. And I've taken probably 12 to maybe 50 different uh, personality tests that all tell me I'm an influencer. Um, and, and I think that's great. And there's times where, where you're probably sitting there going, I've had good days and I've had bad days and, and whatnot. And, and I realize in all of those days, I've never used the word flourishing. Have you ever said to someone, hey, how you doing today? And they're like, I'm flourishing. <laughs> I've never heard it. I mean, anyone in the room have heard, I've heard, I've heard good. I'm great. I've heard, I'm, you know, highly blessed or blessed and highly favored and prosperous. I've heard all those kinds of things, but I've never heard flourishing. I mean, can you imagine going to the gym and being like, oh, that guy's looking pretty good. Hey, bro, you're flourishing. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd probably be kicked out of the gym if I said that to another guy. But it says the godly or the righteous, in other words, will flourish like palm trees. Now, palm trees, let me tell you, they're, they are a symbol of victory. So I want you to think back for a second to us, the stories you may have heard in Sunday school. Maybe those times when you were like being a creaster or something, right? Or a message that you heard, um, you know, in Sunday school or something like that. And the pastor spoke about this triumphant uh, entry that Jesus made. He was riding on a donkey. They had palm branches. They were waving it around and waving it around because of, it was a victorious day. It was a huge entrance. So when you're flourishing, it means that you are thriving, you're growing, you're prospering, you're blessed. It means all kinds of things. It means that you, are, you see spiritual growth happening in your life. Now, the psalmist compared the righteous or the godly to two different trees. Remember, he says palm trees and the cedar tree. Now, it says literally, the godly will grow strong like the cedar of Lebanon. When I first read this, I was thinking, I hate cedar trees. I also love them. I have a love-hate relationship with them. They offer great cover when you're hanging in a tree to shoot a deer. <laughs> you know, like, they're, they're pretty full usually. But down in Texas, I have been driving, and you know, Texas is pretty open, and there's a lot of fields, and depending on where you're at, but I, I remember driving all the time, just going to work, and there was this one field that had probably four or five cedar trees all grouped together right in the middle of the field, And there's always deer around them because they're thick, you know, and there's nothing else in that field. Uh, But then the wind would blow, and you would see this cloud of yellow (laughs) 
go all the way across the field, and it was pretty gross. I mean, you just wash your car, and you drive through by that field. Next thing you know, your car is not white anymore. It's yellow. It's pretty crazy. So I have a love-hate relationship with cedar trees, but that's not the kind of cedar I'm talking about. I want to show you this picture of the cedar of Lebanon. The cedar of Lebanon is a coniferous tree. It's a national emblem of Lebanon. It's actually on their flag. Now, this tree is huge, right? It's strong. It's durable. Most people would probably look at this and say, wow, it's a beautiful tree. And it smells good, too, if you didn't know that. So essentially, I'm just reading my bio here. But uh, y'all didn't catch that. Okay. So I, I, I look at this tree, and I think, this is the Lion King tree. It's really not, but it reminds me of the Lion King, at least. But imagine hanging on a, I think it'd be so fun to hang on a tire swing on this thing. You know for a fact it's not going to break. It's huge. But let me tell you a couple of cool things about this tree. Moses used the bark of this tree to treat leprosy. Now Solomon used the wood of this tree to, to build the temple. Now he used it because cedar, cedar, cedar is a great uh, material for, for because it can resist rot and it can resist insects. And it can survive also, it can survive extreme temperatures on both ends of the spectrum. So really hot or really cold, it's good to go. It's a really hard wood. It's also great for grilling fish. So if you have a plank of cedar, put your fish on there, put it in the grill, it's going to taste amazing. But I guess no one's as hungry as me. So who, who will flourish? The Bible says in, in verse 13, those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of God. So according to the scripture, the scripture is saying those who are planted in the house of the Lord, it doesn't say those who are going to church. It doesn't say those who are, are uh, maybe being nice to people or something. It says those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish no matter what the weather is, no matter what the season of life is or the ups and downs, no matter the, the good days or the bad days that you may have. The Bible says the righteous, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. So I want to talk to you today about how to flourish. Point number one of today's message is to be planted. Be planted. Remember it says in verse 13, I'm going to repeat it one more time so we can all get it. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. So I'm going to talk about planting trees real quick. I don't plant trees. I've never planted a tree. Has anyone in the room ever planted a tree? So y'all could probably say it a lot smoother or cleaner than I would, but what I've seen when people plant a tree is they put this tree in the ground, uh, they put all the soil and stuff around it, right? And then they, because of wind or animals and things like that, they don't want this tree to be taken down or, or, or ripped out, right? And so they put like support systems around it, maybe a couple of pieces of steel or something, those little things, and then they put some wire around it to keep it up. Uh, but then as it grows, what happens is, is what it, it starts to get roots deeper and deeper. The tree starts to grow. It gets a lot stronger. Then it gets to that point where you can kick it, you can hit it, you can run into it with a car, and at some point, that tree's not going to break, right? And so I, I truly believe that this is a really good image or picture of a new believer that grows and matures as they are planted in a place for a particular amount of time. You can't take a tree that you just planted and move it every weekend works never going to get those roots and so it's important to be planted and stay planted like that tree that that eventually you know the the tree that has the the deep roots because life isn't perfect churches aren't perfect you're not perfect I, I know you probably hate to hear that when you get bent out of shape about something at work or at church or in your friendships or in your family and you because you maybe didn't agree with someone or someone offended you listen being offended is a choice and I, I believe that offense is one of the biggest things that stops your roots from growing. It's like those weed-killing, you know, poison stuff that you can, you know, throw all over uh, your, your grass and stuff to kill it to the, to, to, at the roots. I mean, offense is a choice, and it's something that will stop your growth, and it will stop your roots from really getting deep. It's a choice to be offended, and when you're, but whenever you're, you've forgiven people and you moved on past those types of things, your roots get deeper and deeper and deeper and the storms can come and you can withstand it. Let me read to you a scripture from Jeremiah 17, 8, and we'll read this a couple of times today, but Jeremiah 17, verses 8, it says, they are like trees planted 
along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Never stop producing fruit. Listen, church, when, when your roots are, are deep, there's not a storm that can move you. The trials that you face, they won't bother you. Heat won't phase you. Cold won't phase you. Drought, droughts won't affect you. You will stay healthy. You'll stay growing and showing the love of Jesus everywhere you go. Now, this is the kind of flourishing that I'm talking about. The, the, this kind of flourishing is, is not, not those who go to church, but those who are the church. Not I go to church, but I am the church. It's time that we stop going to church and start being the church, y'all. When you do this, I promise you, there's going to be evidence that shows all, all around you. The fruit that is produced in your life will be evident, and, and it'll be showing up everywhere that you go. So I'm going to ask you, would this describe you? Are you flourishing in your life? Or are you dried up and fruitless? Just like a plant. You have tremendous potential if you are planted. Now, there's a, there's a parable from Matthew that talks about seeds, right? And what, and what it shows is that many times seeds never take root. They never take because they, they aren't planted properly. Maybe they're not deep enough or they don't get watered or they're, they're, they just stay on the surface. And I want to challenge you today to not let the seeds that are planted in your life be surface level or be so shallow that they can be dug up and ripped out or dried up. I'm going to challenge you in your, when, when you're at home or on vacation or wherever you're at, make sure wherever you are, make being in church with other believers a priority because it, sh- it should never be a question of whether or not you're going to attend church. My daughter would tell you, she, does, she never uh, assumes because we're traveling or whatever the case is, she never assumes that we're going to sleep in on Sunday. She assumes the other way around. She knows on Sunday we're going to get up really early <laughs> and we're going to be at church all day long. And so, and, 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 be, and the reason why I say this is because really what, what I want you to do, what I want to kind of hopefully get deep into your heart and your mind is, is that being the church, it, it's, it's an identity. B- Going to church is somewhere you go. It's a, it, for some people, it's a spectatorship. But being the church is an identity. And when you aren't in church regularly, it's really hard to flourish because those seeds will get dried up or they'll get dug up. So don't allow the seeds that are, ta- that are, that are planted in your life the opportunity to be dug up or dried up. Make sure you're planted, you're watering, you're watered, and you're growing. And I'll tell you this, the best way to get planted here at ACC is to become a partner here at the church. And to put it as simply as possible, being a partner means this. You are giving us permission to challenge you, to push you to grow spiritually, and you're giving us permission to call you out when needed. To call you out when needed. It's as simple as that. We're not, we're not saying you have to do 15 different things at all. We are saying we want to see your life flourish and so become a partner with us. Have you ever heard of a, a tree called uh, the giant redwood? Some people refer to it as sequoias or giant sequoias, right? They're huge. Uh, well, these trees can grow up to 30 stories tall. Can you imagine that? 30 stories. Now, this building is like three stories. I guess you can say four if you count the lounge, but can you imagine 26, 27 more stories on top of this? Uh, 30 stories tall, their roots are as deep as 150 feet down into the ground, and they can get as wide as 100 feet wide. I think that's, that's incredibly just humongous, for one. But as these trees grow, it's really cool. What happens is, they, you know, as their, deeps grow, their, their roots grow deeper, they're, they're growing taller at the same time. And whenever they are near other giant redwoods, or redwoods and, and sequoias, when they are near each other, their roots 
that are already getting deep and really wide start to intertwine and lock together, kind of join forces, I guess you can say. Well, that's what a partnership at ACC is like. It's a support system that is there to help you when times are tough. When the storm hits, you can now withstand that because you're not standing alone anymore. You're standing with other people that are there to, 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 to celebrate with you, to cry with you, to fight with you, whatever the case, to encourage you, to praise God with you. So I'd encourage you today to be planted or get planted. Point number two today, so we've done uh, how to flourish is to be planted, and point number two is and nourished. So be planted and nourished. So let's see more of what the psalmist said in Psalm 92 in verses 14 and 15. It says, even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. So both the palm and the cedar trees are evergreens, by the way. And and those trees outlast storms. I tell you what. In their lifespan, whether they're younger or older, they stand strong and they produce fruit and whatever else they produce, no matter what is happening around them in nature. You know, I was thinking about this, this concept of fruit being produced, especially from like an older age to a, to a, or a younger age to an older age. I, I remember telling my wife, I've told her this probably I don't know, every year since we got married, actually, that I have this dream of having some land that God's going to provide for me at some point with a house on it with a wraparound porch, right? And I am, I, I want to be that, that guy, that, um, the old man with a, you know, a cup of coffee, maybe my Bible sitting there so I can do my morning devotions and maybe another book, depends on how long I want to sit out there because it's really humid in Maryland, so it's got to be somewhere else. And then, of course, a rifle right here with me, right? <laughs> And you're probably thinking, why? What are you going to do? I have, I have a couple of plans with it. If I'm on the back of the house in my rocking chair sipping on coffee and it's the morning or the evening or something and a deer comes by, I'm going to get it, you know. I don't care. That's what I, so that's part A. And then I'm going to go around to the front later on and sit in the front and do the same thing. And now the rifle, it's not for a deer anymore because there's a front yard. It's for unwanted visitors, right? You ever have that kind of plan? I don't literally mean that. I say that to her jokingly whenever I tell her that that's, but at the same time, I'm kind of serious. I don't know, maybe. Y'all just pray for me. So (laughs) as I get older, I really do want my character to reflect fruit that should be apparent from being a believer, that should be apparent from being a child of God. I really want my character to, be, to, I don't want people to know me as the grumpy old man that sits on his porch shooting at people or animals. I don't want to be known as the old man that's like grumpy and hates everyone. I want to be known as this joyful, always happy, caring, sometimes grumpy maybe, but he's always loving. That's what I want to be known as, you know, like, He's the guy that's sitting there, yeah, he's waiting for a deer. You might hear a pop pretty soon, but at the same time, I know if I go up to him and talk to him, he's going to be encouraging and he's going to be loving. That's what I want people to know me as. And and like this palm and cedar tree that I'm talking about, I, I want to be showing fruit no matter the storms that I've went through. I've went through some pretty tough things in, in my lifetime, especially in the last like 10 years as an adult being married and having kids and stuff. You learn a lot when you have kids. Uh, especially when you've gotten used to having one that can do everything on her own and then two more diapered ones come into your house and you're like, whoa, I forgot. <laughs> you know, that's how I've been feeling. But, but if you are nourished, the fruit in your life, they will grow and they will show. And I do want to caveat this and say, y'all are sitting in church right now. Yes, you are. Uh, you're sitting in a building that we use to glorify God. You're sitting in a, in a place that Satan actually does not mind that you are in. You ever heard someone think, talk about it like that? Satan doesn't care that you're here. He's probably smiling that you're here, actually, because if he can somehow get to you, if he can somehow start to destroy your life, he thinks he can destroy others around you, too. What Satan actually hates is whenever you are in church and you are planted and you are nourished. Because that's when your fruit will start to show. And that's when the fruit that you are showing in your life, it points you to Jesus. And it points other people towards Jesus as well. 
So how do you get nourished? Real quick, uh, we have five catalysts. If you walk down this hallway ever, you'll notice five posters on the wall. This five catalyst is something that we strive to do everything at the church by, like we live by this, and that is to worship, connect, grow, serve, and give. And if you are a partner with us, those are the things that we're going to challenge you on, and we're going to try to push you towards growth in those areas. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, I read it before, uh, I'll read it again. It says, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. I added a scripture right there. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So you don't have to worry about trials or storms or things that you might face in your life. In fact, James 1, the book of James talks about, it says to consider these things joy. Consider it an opportunity to be joyful when you face these things, when you face tough times. Because when you face these, this, this heat or this drought, so to speak, you consider it joy because it produces perseverance and it produces uh, endurance. And, and, and then when you are planted and nourished, your roots will start to grow and continue to grow deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and you become stronger like that tree we keep talking about, the giant redwood. As those roots grow deeper, that tree is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, 150 foot deep roots. Can you imagine? And 100 feet wide? That's, that's crazy deep. Those roots are so deep. I tell you, there's uh, hurricanes, probably uh, some tornadoes and all that can hit them, and the tree would probably break the tornado. That's how strong this tree is. And no matter what comes your way, you will be producing fruit. And you're pro- some of you are probably listing off the fruit in your head, and some of you are probably going, what on earth are you talking about? When I say fruit, I'm talking about love, fruit of the Spirit, the spiritual fruit that, that come uh, from being a believer. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. These are the things that I'm talking about. These fruit keep growing even through tough times, through droughts, through heat, cold, whatever it is. So part of nourishment is being planted in the right spot as well. Point number three today is to be planted in good soil. In good soil. So you want to be planted and nourished and in good soil. Now real quick, what do I mean by good soil? I mean a good church. A good church is what you want to be planted in. And ACC is incredible soil to be planted in. If you're a first-time guest, you're probably thinking this is some kind of sales pitch right now. I'm really not giving you a sales pitch. This really is a great place to be. It's a healthy church in many different ways. I mean, we, we boldly teach the Word of God, and we don't skip a verse because it might step on your toes. We prefer to step on your toes and, and make you feel a little uncomfortable at times so that Whenever you are out in the world, you know how to respond to things that the world are throwing at you because the world's pretty crazy. I'll tell you what, our vision here is to see people transformed and released by the love of Jesus, and, and we believe that we see that every week. We have more people giving their lives to Christ and then taking the next steps to profess their faith publicly and getting baptized here than we ever have before. And ACC staff is pretty, pretty healthy too. I mean, the culture that you experience when you walk in the doors or you drive on the parking lot, that's the culture that started. That you, you get to experience that culture because that's the culture of the staff. That starts from the top down, from our overseers down. That's the culture that we have here, and it's a good, healthy one. I mean, even the church's finances are doing great. They're, they're healthy. And so there's a lot of different reasons why I can tell you that ACC is an incredible, healthy, uh, good, it's good soil to be planted in. Uh, I will say this too. Craig Rochelle uh, pointed this out in a message. I've heard him say it a few times, and I thought it was pretty funny, but at the same time, it hits you pretty deep. You know, like I, I, like I was saying, ACC is good, a good place. It's a great place. It's also not a perfect place. There is no perfect church. Do you know why there is no perfect church? It's because you and I are in it. That's why it's not a perfect church. But this is what Craig Rochelle said. He said, If you find a perfect church, don't join the church because you'll screw it up. (laughs) We have a lot of things that we bring into places, and we're not perfect. There's no way the church will be perfect either. But uh, but ACC is a great place to be uh, and to to grow spiritually. So as we end every service here, I want to ask, I want you to ask this question to yourself: What now, God? 
you know, we're right in the middle of this uh, month that we, or the season that we call March Madness. And so I want to point out, there's one little woo right there. So I want to point out something real quick that, you know, you've been seeing these videos uh, every Sunday back here, and you've been seeing them on social media about people serving in different areas. I want to point out one of our catalysts, and that's serve sacrificially. There's a quote that I've mentioned several times since I've been here uh, almost four years ago now. I've, I've, I've read this quote to you several times that we are never more like Jesus than, we are, than when we are serving him or others. There is no higher calling than to be a servant. I want you to hear me out. You can attend church. You can, you can sign up for growth courses. You can be here every time the doors are open for anything. You can go to life groups every week. You can do good things, give back to people in the community. You can do all of that every day. You can be nice and friendly to everyone you encounter, but you will never be more like Jesus than when you serve. Because it says in the Bible, he he came to serve and to save. It it starts here, by the way. It's really easy. It starts here at your church. where you are planted, find a place to serve. And yes, you're sitting in a church building that's used every week for worshiping, worshiping of the one true God. And we call it a church, we do. It's a home. Every family has a home, right? And everybody in the family is a part, a part of this thing that creates this home. But it's more than that. It's a movement, y'all. This is simply a building that we use to glorify God. The church goes beyond these walls. And if you've accepted Christ in your life, then you have not just been saved from your sins, but you have been saved for the glory of God and for his purpose for your life, not your own purpose. And so I'd encourage you to serve. If you want to flourish in your faith, y'all stop going to church. Start to be the church. Stop, to, stop going to church, start being the church. I'll tell you a few, a few easy steps for you. If you're not a partner, become a partner right away, as soon as you can. If you're, not a, if you're a partner and you're not serving, serve, start serving. If you're a partner and you are serving, thank you. We, we really appreciate it and, and we know that you're, you're likely flourishing in your life. But listen, it's, it's time to stop going to church and, and to start being the church. And there was never a better time than right now to do that. You know, if you apply these things that I'm talking about, this, this, this concept of flourishing to your life, I can promise you to change you, to, to be planted, be nourished, and in good soil. And, and I want to say this real quick. A seed can only grow if it's planted, right? It's not going to grow otherwise. But going to church isn't the same as being planted. It's time that we start to be the church. The highest calling on your life isn't to go to church As we read in the scripture, the highest calling in your life is to be planted in the house of God and then to go out in the world and preach that good news to others, to show the love of Jesus to others. So it's time. The time is now, y'all. So I want to tell you real quick about what's going to happen next week. Next week, uh, we're going to have an intentionally shorter service, but it's not so that you can get out early and go pick up your kids and then go lunch early. It's because we are going to have all of our ministry areas out in the cafe in a and on, there'll be a lot of tables out and you can see where the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart. If you're walking around, you're looking at the, the, the different ministry booths or tables are out there and you're going, oh, that one's really cool. That one's really cool, but this one is really, I feel something different about that. That's not you just thinking that's cute or that's not you just going, oh, babies, I can serve in the nursery. Cool. That's the Holy Spirit saying you can make a difference there. I want you to serve there. So we're going to have this set up for you. The children's ministry, if you have kids up there, they are going to continue teaching your kids about Jesus the entire time that you are out there uh, kind of looking at these tables and stuff. And so uh, this is really for for anyone who's not serving. If you're serving, I'd encourage you to stand and talk to people about serving and talk to them about where you're serving and be a part of it. And so we want to, if you're watching online too, and I think it's time for you to transition from that and to get here. You don't want to miss it. Be here in this building um, and make sure that you find a place to get plugged in so that you are planted, you're nourished, and you're in good soil. Amen. Church, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would do a work in our hearts. 
you would, uh, as we are planted here at ACC, God, that you would start to, to use serving and, and other opportunities with worshiping and giving and everything, all the catalysts that we talked about. God, I pray, Lord, that you would use those things, Father, to help us in our own lives flourish. God, I pray, Lord, that, that, uh, that you would speak to us between now and next Sunday so that we, when we enter the church and we go to see those ministry areas, that we would know exactly uh, where we are called, that we would know that there is somewhere in this church where we can all make an impact uh, in, their, in, in kids' lives or other people's lives. And whatever it is, Father, I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would move um, and that everyone in this room and online or in the lounge will be here next week to be a part of this movement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this. You belong at ACC.